wander no more I turn my steps about Take another route In the house of the Lord Dear friend, right now Reject the Savior no more Just turn your steps about Take another route to the
Beautiful day that you've given us, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for this service. We pray for Brother Justin that he just give us the message that we stand in need of, that you send it down into him and just anoint his lips, that uh, he just, it be preaching be easy for him, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for this little church. We pray that we'll always come in one mind and one accord, that we'll just be willing to do your works and not think about the world while we're in here, dear Lord. Not only while we're in here, dear Lord, we pray that. For us as a, a, a church family that we'll go out and do your work in the world, dear Lord, and let people see our light shine, dear Lord. Not only this church, but all the church as a whole, the Christian church, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we just pray for those that are sick and afflicted, dear Lord. We pray that you touch them and heal them, that it be your will, dear Lord. Just we know that you have the power to heal any sickness, any disease, dear Lord. Just if it be your will, just by a touch of your hand, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for those that are lost in sin. Dear Lord, we pray that you just uh, send a conviction upon them so hard, that deeper than any sin could stay. And dear Lord, just uh, bring them to you and let them humble, humble themselves down and ask forgiveness of their sins. Dear Lord, uh, dear Lord, if there be somebody out there that have uh, fallen short, dear Lord, and came back into sin once been saved, dear Lord, we pray that they'll just pick up their cross and come back to you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we just uh, pray all this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Number 101. Mm -hmm.
special they want to sing this morning?
uh, that he gave him sound doctrine to live by. And the first thing he told him was that he lived by what he'd already been taught because it's good. Yeah, what, 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 the, what is taught of the Word of God is good. And you know what? It was by God that it was made that way. So you know, I, I'm going to go into the third chapter of the book of Timothy here in a little while. Uh, but first, I, I want to make something very clear. We're going to talk about today uh, the accountability of handling God's Word. And you know what? Uh, I, I have a specific aim, I do believe, uh, uh, to the ministers, the teachers, and deacons. Uh, but you know what? In thinking about all this right here, and Brother Ron took a trifecta on this one, uh, I believe he got it, he's the one who's got it in all three ways. But uh, uh, you know what? You really think about it, though, handling God's Word, that's every one of us. That's and you know what? And I, when I talk about accountability each and every time, I, I think that, that we need to get the gist of what I believe the Word of God points to that. Is that even though we may be talking about specific uh, uh, places in the church, specific uh, uh, maybe the, uh, leadership roles that are there, each and every one of us in some way, shape, form, or fashion are held accountable uh, to those positions. Uh, we may not, I, I know that I have not been called uh, uh, necessarily to the position of a teacher, but I, I, you know what I know as a pastor, I, sometimes I have to teach. But I, I, you know what, in that though, uh, I still have to pray uh, uh, for the teachers that I, hey, we got good Amen. Sunday school teachers, we always have. And I, uh, you know what, and I, I believe we ought to pray for those Sunday school teachers and, and the fact that they're bringing up our kids in a way. You know what, uh, we, we've got it staggered out in levels. Uh, they, they go back there whenever they're a young child and they grow up in those different levels uh, only to lead them out there whenever they get to the age they come out in this adult Sunday school class expecting them to know how to use the Bible and uh, uh, how to get to the Scripture. And then that way that the knowledge can be expounded upon them. So, you know what, it's up to us though to pray and ask God to come by and increase in those ways. So, we're all accountable on different levels. But you know, I, I want to get to handling God's Word this morning. Uh, uh, the meaty part of it. Over the 12th chapter, the book of Psalms, I'm going to read just a few verses right here to let you know why the Word of God is so important. Sixth and seventh verse, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. You know what? There's a reason why God's Word is worth handling. There's a reason why God's Word is good today. It is profitable for everything that we do. And uh, why we are held accountable is because it is purified as in seven times. We know the number seven, I believe, to be a number of perfection. God uh, done it in such a way. It's not anything that man done. It's not anything the authors of the book done. But it was God Himself that purified it in such a way that it's still good today. It's still profitable, but it be used by everybody. So you know what? We are held accountable to a good word uh, that is preserved by the Lord Himself uh, and that it's kept. And now I want you to notice what it said there. It said, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. It, it's not up to me or you. Uh, you know, I, I could go into the history of, of, of the King James Version Word of God, which I believe is the Word of God. And, uh, all these others today, uh, uh, they're changed. Uh, they've been copyrighted. If you copyright something, it's got to be at least 10% different from the original. So uh, uh, the King James Version not being copyrighted. Uh, I was preserved out. God preserved it himself. Uh, had over 1,500 copies that they took. Uh, uh, King James, regardless of what kind of man he was, I'm not worried about what King James was. All I know is that God had action in this. He purified it. He kept it. And that's the word we read today. And that's what we're going to hold on to. So you know what? When I'm seeing this at this point right here, when it says that God will keep it and preserve it from this generation forever, you know what? We mess things up. Uh, but you know what? Once again, as we've been talking about, uh, as that we might mess things up, uh, knowing that God purified it, uh, we are going to be held accountable uh, for carrying it forward. God made a way. He made it a way and now we've got it. Uh, it's written in the common man's language right here that you and I, uh, we can take it, we can spiritually discern it and know what it said. Know what God wanted us to hear out of it. But now we're going to be held accountable because now we've got to listen to it. Now we've got to take in what it says. So, you know, I want you to notice this morning what Paul uh, tells Timothy. And I, you know what, this is uh, uh, the last time that I believe that he gave a, a charge to him about this. Uh, you know what, because if you read on down after we get done right here, and I'm not going to read that far, but if you want to, uh, you can read that uh, Paul was telling him, hey, this is the last time we'll see of you. Now, hold to what I've told you. So you know what, if, uh, Paul, like I said, was not a pastor. Uh, uh, he was more like an evangelist. He set up churches. Uh, being an apostle of Christ, he gave the ways that things needed to be set up within the church, within the body of Christ. But he gave them to Timothy because Timothy was to be a pastor. Right. He was to be the one that was going to lead. And you know, like I said last week, we talked about pastors. And, uh, but I want you to know what the, the thing is, though. 
As being a pastor, the, the example is set. God set the example in His Word. That's right. Therefore, that's why self is always the most uh, important when accountability is talked about. But even it comes down to the pastor right here, Timothy, that had been being charged by Paul by the Word of God. So he needs to be told why all Scripture is good, why it is inspired of God and good for everybody. You know what? This church right here uh, has been around for 30 years now. Now, uh, you know what? Now I'm sitting here thinking about it. And uh, the only thing that has stayed constant, because people have come in and come out. Uh, they, they've changed over the years. Uh, uh, the way our building is set up uh, has changed over the years. But there is one thing that's constant, and that is the Word of God. Keeping the Word of God will be the only thing that will ever hold true all the way until the Lord comes back. So you know what? I'm going to tell you, uh, whenever He tells him over here, we're going to start the 16th and 17th verse of the 3rd chapter of the book of 2 Timothy. You know what? And, I'm gonna, and it's going to bleed over into the 4th chapter. We've got a few scriptures there. Uh, we're going to stay right here the whole time, but... It says in the 16th verse, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know, I done read you the Scripture right there where God preserved the Word. It's inspired of God. It's given of God. That's why it's still good. It, if it's been given to man, I, it can be discredited. I've heard people say, and I know you have too, is that uh, the Bible is nothing more than a man written word. Well, you know, that's not the case because these men weren't normal men. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't about themselves. They were inspired of the Spirit of God. That's why all Scripture is good. You know what? There's not one good thing in me. No, not one. Neither is there you. But you know what? Inspired of the Holy Spirit of God, we can do good things. Amen. You know what? So what we see right here is, is that all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. You know what? When God inspires, I, you know what? I don't know about you, but that night I got saved. You know what? There was something that came over me. There was desires that were placed within me. Uh, you know what, I've done things differently than I did. I looked at things differently than I once would. And you know what, this is going to come into play uh, a lot when we get a little further down in the Scripture. But that desire is something to be held on to. And most of all, a desire to be inspired of the Word of God. You know what, when it comes to the handling of the Word of God, when it comes to me and you carrying it, and I, and I said I was going to be talking about ministers and teachers and deacons, but all of us have been called into the ministry of reconciliation. We've all been called into the bringing of the gospel to a lost and dying world. So therefore, we all are held accountable when it comes to this being inspired of the Word of God. So you know what? It takes a desire to hear the Word of God in order to carry it and handle it when we go out to a lost and dying world. Because if you ain't got a desire for it, uh, uh, you ain't got the right enthusiasm about it, uh, I believe we're being enthusiastic. Uh, uh, you know what I will tell you? I, I, I watched the video. I believe Brother Ron and uh, Brother Mike Melton, they shared it the other day. And I, I got on YouTube and watched it yesterday. And he was talking about being enthusiastic to do things of the Lord. You know what? Some things we might not uh, uh, see as comfortable. You know what? It is not comfortable to go out into a world that does not believe in God. And, it, and that's a fact. You know what? You read over in the first chapter of the book of John, what does it tell us? He came into the world and the world received him not. Now, now, you know, not even his own people would. So it's not easy to go out into a world uh, with, a, with the Word of God that does not believe in God and begin to preach the gospel the way that it needs to be preached. It needs to be preached by someone that has a desire to hear it and apply it to themselves and go out and handle it in such a way that they know what they've got their hands on. You know what? If you don't know what you've got your hands on this morning, I, I encourage you to find it out. You know what it says? Hey, you, I, I believe that a man that does not know what he's got his hands on, the one that uh, is pertaining to the Word of God, is more dangerous than one uh, that would not go out and do it. That's right. You know how, what, what I mean by that? Hey, I believe uh, uh, today that there's been a lot of people that have been misled. Uh, you know what, Paul, why does he tell Timothy this? He starts out by making sure that Timothy knows that God put this in order. If Timothy didn't know this, how much uh, damage could he cause to this church that he was now a pastor of? You know what I'm going to tell you? That's happening in this world now. It's happening in Paul's time. It's happening at this time. But it's said by it's given by the, the inspiration of God. And you know what that is? The constant God's word uh, that we'll stand here. And it says it is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. There is no coincidence in the word of God. You know, and everything shows up. And I believe the Bible speaks in such a way to make it relevant to this time. We talked about being the living Word of God last week. But I want you to see what it said right here. What does he say? And I was, and like I said earlier, I want to talk to you about ministers, teachers, and deacons. Well, what does it say right here? It's profitable for doctrine. Doctrine comes because of the preached Word of God. That's why there is a necessity of the preached Word uh, in our services on Sunday. Most of us in here today have been saved by the grace of God, by testimony. We all have heard it. But you know what? You still show up Sunday in, Sunday out. 
if, if, if you could get that one time in your life and go out and do anything you want to, there would be no necessity to be here. But it's because of doctrine that is necessary that the preach word of God go out. We show up Sunday in and Sunday out uh, to hear the word of God that we can apply to our life because it is profitable for doctrine. So what we see right here is that the ministering of the Word of God is then in play. But then it says next, it says, uh, for reproof and for correction. What is that? That comes by the teaching of the Word of God. That's why there is a necessity for teachers. You know what a lot of times, hey, I, I know that it happens everywhere. Uh, maybe sometimes they there can't be helped. But I believe that Sunday school is one of the most important things that a lot of people miss out on. You know what? You hear the preached word of God. It's something. It gives doctrine. It, it lays it out there. But you know what? When it comes down to the teaching of the word of God, I, you know what? I have never seen. And I, you know what? I, I think I can, I, can, I can say this and back it up with the word of God. I have never seen anyone grow. Grow as a Christian uh, in the graces of God without Sunday school or Bible study. That's right. That, I've never seen that happen. You know what? Why is that? Because it's still good for the for the reproof and for the correction. When you get in and you dig into the Word of God, want to know what the deeper truths are. You know what that desire we talked about earlier? It's left behind by a lot of Christians today. And you know what? Whenever you don't, you lose a desire to get deeper and deeper in the Word of God. You lose a desire to follow after God and a desire to handle His Word in such a way that it's beneficial to the world. So you know what? It, it, you've got to be able to take correction. You've got to be able to take that reproof and correction. If, if we didn't know, and I'm going to tell you a lot of times, there have been times I've read the Word of God, and I know you have too, and it wasn't what I wanted to hear. It wasn't, it wasn't what, exactly what made me feel good. And I, I, you know what? I, I was reading on something of this the other day. I, you know what? It's not the things that make me feel good uh, uh, that begin to worry me, but the things that do that make me not feel good that begin to worry about the Word of God. You know what? Hey, I want to tell you, it's good in good times. Uh, uh, people use them scriptures all the time. Uh, uh, you know, make them feel real good. How the Lord lift them up, and no doubt the Lord will do that. But you know, what about them ones that uh, uh, whenever you're walking astray and don't even know it, and them scriptures come in and put you right in correction right there. You know, how much more golden are them right there? I'm not saying any part of the Word of God any better than the other. But what I am saying right now is that sometimes it's not all about a feel-good time. And we'll get into that here in a minute. But, it said, but in the next part, it is for the instruction in righteousness. Now I'm going to talk about deacons. You know what? I, I believe deacons that they're appointed to the church. They're asking the church to come in and take care of the church. But without this, without the Word of God, I don't believe a deacon could do his job and do his duty. He's got to be laid out. Right. It's, it's there for the, the, the instruction in righteousness. Not only for deacons only. Like I said, we're all accountable right here. But right here is where I believe it comes into play for this. You know what, we can, like I said, we can go back and read uh, the qualifications once again, but what we're pertaining to right here is by the Word of God. Things got to be done by the Word of God. You know what, deaconship is given that a man begin to carry out things that be of God pertaining to the church. That's right. So this is what we begin to get into right here, is that it is good for all those things. It's good for everything, uh, whether it be ministry, whether it be teaching, whether it be deaconship. All these things are good because of the Word of God. Nobody else, because that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. So you know what anything left out today would be because we ignore the Word of God. So getting into the next part right here in the fourth chapter, the first verse. He begins to start out. He says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall, and I want you to notice it says, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. You know what I will tell you right now is that there's one thing that I've noticed as I've studied over this accountability uh, subject right here is that each and every time that there has been a promise given by God, each and every time, and I believe God did this. I don't like to say it's inspired, it's spiritually inspired by God Himself. Uh, to be written down. Whenever He said that it was good for all these things, He's also going to make sure that by His judgment, He holds everyone accountable through His Son Jesus Christ. So you know what? He, that's why I believe Paul says, "I charge that." You know what? Each and every person that's ever been ordained of the church is preached a charge. I believe if he's done the right way. Right. You know, when that charge is given in such a way as Paul did Timothy at this point in time, is that he now knows that he's accountable to hold this word. Now, if you've heard the word of God, it's pricked your heart, you've been saved um, uh, marvelously by his grace. And you've got up at that point in time with a desire to hear the word of God, 
And you get into it and you hear it that much more. The more that you hear, and like we now made the statement about what the scripture says the other day, is that where much is, is given, much will be required. So therefore, the charge is that those that hear the word of God now keep the word of God. How do we keep the word of God? You wouldn't do we hold it to ourselves. Now, you know what? I, I don't believe that a man's ever lived a happy life for the Lord. If he kept the word of God to himself, kept his testimony to himself, right. the Bible tells us that let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Uh, you know what? I believe that a, a man's going to confess that he's been saved. And, uh, not only will he confess it, though he'll live it. And you know what? When he told Timothy right here, he said, I charge thee. You know, because he might tell Timothy he's the one to preach. And you know, as I begin to think about this right here, is that whenever he said, I charge you, well, the charge is given because judgment is surely coming. And you know what I'm going to tell you? It's not only coming to those that hear it, but it's coming to those that preach it. You know what I'm going to tell you right now? Each and every word that you say, there will be not one word that will be left unaccounted for. Yeah, and, and, and you know, that's why you hold yourself accountable to man, that the Lord doesn't have to hold you accountable later on. You know what? If we keep ourselves in line with what the Word of God says and make sure we use the Word of God, hey, if you get up and you ever have to, to uh, wonder what you're going to say to somebody, you know what? A lot of times I, I've thought about this preaching and everything enough. You know what? When all else fails, I know that I can hold on to the Word of God that it's going to be perfect. There's not going to be anything left undone. You know what? There might be certain times where certain scriptures are needed. But you know what? Each and every time you use the Word of God, you can rest assured that God's already inspired it. He's already blessed it. It'll go out. It'll not return void. All these things are lined up right here. So trust in the Word of God because surely it lets us know that all will come under judgment and be accountable for their own actions. So therefore, let your actions be right by the Word of God. You know what? So what it says right here in the next word, he says to preach the Word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort all long suffering and not. You know what? I'm, I'm going to start off by the top right here. It says to preach the Word. You know what? I'm going to tell you, I like to say, I, I might be talking to ministers and teachers and deacons, but you know what? Each and every one of us, once again, have been charged with preaching the Word of God. Uh, you know what? You may not stand behind a pulpit or anything like that. Uh, you might not be up in front of a crowd. But whenever you open your mouth and you begin to tell about the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the, uh, the, the, the gospel that was laid out of His death, burial, and resurrection, uh, uh, you are preaching the Word of God. It is going out to the world. But notice what He says when He tells Timothy to preach the Word. Of course, we're talking about accountability. We're talking about being held accountable for the things that we do. When He says to preach the Word, He says, be instant in season and out of season. What does this mean? You know, I, I, I begin to kind of write down some things right here, what I thought. Uh, I've got four things right here. Preach it when it's easy. You know what? I, I, I've held, I was counting it up the other day. I think it's been about 23 revivals in the last two years. And you know what? In all those services, and, and I can admit, there have been some services that, uh, you know what, it was good before I even got up behind a pulpit. You know, it, uh, the Spirit was flowing, it was moving, and uh, you know what? I, it was an easy time preaching. You know what? It's good to preach when it's easy. It's good whenever everything's going good, when you ain't got no sickness in the church. Uh, when I can stand up here and they're not, and, and like I say, it, it's good to pray all the time. Now, we, we, and the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing, but could you imagine getting up here and then uh, nobody had a prayer request for anybody that was sick? Uh, you know what? If, if all our family members wants to show up or anything like that, and we've been praying to come to church, you know, those, those are good times. Amen. Preach when it's easy. You know what? God's word still needs to be preached. Don't, don't get slack when it comes down to it. Because if you're being uh, consistent for God, well, that's what uh, Paul is telling Timothy right here, is to preach the Word. Just preach the Word. And, you know, if it's good, there's still a need for the Word of God. But you know what? Also, there's times when it's hard. You know what? Whenever whenever there is sickness in the church, whenever uh, people are not here, maybe maybe, maybe the numbers down, maybe people ain't showing up like we see on a consistent basis. You know what? There's a consistency of uh, things being hard in life. You know what? Uh, hey, I've got things going on in my life sometimes that are hard. But you know what? Whenever I put myself in Timothy's place right here, and if Paul was speaking to me, which I still believe that he is because it's inspired of God to be written down that it's still the living word. If I believe that he was speaking to me right now, is even though I've got other things going on, I'm still preparing myself in such a way to handle the word of God that I will not impute myself into it. You know, when I stand up, hey, it doesn't matter what happened to me last week. It, ain't, it don't matter what I got going on next week. All that matters is right now preaching the Word of God and handling it in such a way uh, that it is important enough to me that it goes out with, with, with nothing that will hold it back. That's right. You know what? I can hold it back. 
You know what? Time, hard times cause us to do that. It's good. To, it's easy to do it in easy times, but whenever the hard times come, putting all the things aside. You know, whatever been time I preached, whenever it was sick, when I was sick, uh, you know what? The Lord gave me enough breath to get up and do it, and I done it. Uh, you know what? And I like to say, but then one of them times uh, uh, got hard and tough like that. I, and I, I was thinking about this as I wrote that down, though. As I wrote that, the times that are hard, I believe that whenever much, much effort is required, a lot of times, my God, if you give that effort, the blessings are that much more. The reward pays that much better. And you know what? God does that. God, God has always paid the best wages. Uh, you know what? If you get out and you work for Him, I believe that He'll bless you farther than you can ever contain. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about if you wear your cups overflowing. I, I'm talking about when you feel good on the inside and out. Uh, you know what? I, there's nothing that I've ever done physically uh, that can't be overcome spiritually. I believe that with all my heart. And I, that's why I hold on to what I got. You know what? I'm going to tell you. I, I preach the Word be in, in season and out of season. It's easy to preach whenever the congregation or the, or the crowd that you're speaking to or the person you're speaking to is, is bearing fruit. Uh, you know what? Whenever they've been saved, you know what? Preaching the Word to somebody that, that already knows the Word and has been brought up. A lot of times it, it, it's easy to preach then. But you know what? It's still got to be preached. Sometimes we've got to tell them. Sometimes they may be facing hard times. And a, a Word of God, when it goes out, I don't care what position a man's in. And that, that's what the best thing about the Word of God is about being the universal. You know what? If you, if you go out and you preach it, I don't care if a man's having the best day in the world or it's the worst day he's ever experienced. It's still needed. That's so, right. Preach when the fruit's there. Sometimes the fruit, the fruit, the fruit uh, is, is there and it's, it, and it's able to be seen. You know what? I, I, I'm not, like I say, most of these messages, when I'm sitting here thinking about I'm thinking about the house fire and everything, about things going on. That's what's happening to me in my life right now. Now, you know, I believe the Lord puts me through things uh, to be able to realize things. And you know what? In all these things right here, though, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, well, you know what? All this going on, but how much do I still need to hear? How, how much do I still have a desire to hear those words? You know what? People come by and they'll share scriptures with me. I know the scripture. I, I, you know, I've read it a hundred times. But you know what? Those simple scriptures right there are still the words of God. And I still need them. You know what? And, and I, I think that we all need to take notice of that. Because you know, you know what? There's a necessity to preach when the fruits are there. But you know what? The next part is, is to preach when the fruits are invisible. You know what? I've heard ministers say this. I've heard preachers say this before. They get up and they talk about how flat the service is. You know, sometimes that happens. I, you know, it's, it's all it should happen. That shouldn't be. You know, there should never be a service that's not spirit filled. I, I believe that. I believe that God Himself de desires that every service that we have be spirit filled. But I've heard about people and the ministers, some ones that need to listen to this right here. You know what? Even though, and then you listen to this and th this time because there may be times where there's nothing else flowing. But if you'll notice that the house of God is not where the Spirit of God is. We say that time and time again, but we need to realize it. When we come in the house of God, we bring the Spirit with us. That's right. So you know what? If, if a service ever to you seems flat, then maybe there's something you need to do. Amen. Maybe there's something you need to do. And I'll tell you what, if a man calls himself a preacher, and uh, you know, even though the service might not be going, if he's got himself lined up right, if you've got yourself in tune with God, when you get up, it ain't going to matter how everybody else is. I believe the Spirit of God bless you enough that you can bless others. I believe it will give you enough power and unction. When the fruits ain't there, then you can bear fruit still yourself. I believe that God's always took in the odds that were stacked against Him and began to use it to prove to the world that He's still God. You know, if it wasn't for that, I, I'm going to tell you, how would we know what miracles are? How would we know uh, uh, what, what faith is? Uh, you know, what faith, uh, what's faith unless it's tested? You know, what I'm going to tell you so many times where we see things drying out, when the fruits we don't see them with our own eyes, but yet... Maybe we're the ones that need to bear the fruit. Maybe we're the ones that need. And I'm going to tell you, with handling the Word of God, with the Word that's been getting, if you know what you've got your hands on, when you begin to preach it, knowing that it does not return void, uh, uh, you are blessing enough. And you know what? I believe that we all need to realize that. And I think that's what he's telling uh, uh, Timothy right here at this point. Is that whenever, he's be, whenever he is preaching the Word, being instant in season and out of season. Sometimes people want to hear it. Sometimes people won't. You know, I'm going to tell you, there's people that have lost the desire to hear the Word of God. And you know what? I'm going to get into that here in a minute. But it says that it'll, get, it'll be there. It'll be there to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. If we'll keep it in the ways, not worrying about everything else. And I've said it time and time again, I'm going to keep saying it, is there is nothing out in this world that should affect you on the inside. There is not, not one thing. And I, like I say, hey, troubles and trials will come. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you're not going to deal with it. But what I am saying is you can choose to make the decision how it's going to affect you. 
You know, if you take the Lord prayer, I have to, have to believe that I serve the Lord and a God that can take care of all things. Amen. You know, and if I believe that and I take the Lord's prayer, I know He's going to handle it and He's going to make sure that I can be instant in season and out season. No matter what. You know what? Be consistent. Stay on the same path. Stay with the same work. You know what we see nowadays? Things have changed. No doubt, the times we're living in right now are so much different than they used to be. Now we see our churches, they're going to different versions of the Word of God. They're changing their music up. Now, you know, they, think they happen to feel that today these things don't work. They, they've, changed, they've changed the outlook on how, how the church is perceiving things. You know what? And I ain't going to argue with them on that. I think that a lot of times the church is perceiving things wrong because they've lost the desire to hear the Word of God. Amen. But maybe it came because of the handling of the Word of God. You know what? Because a man that would stand up and would say, hey, this is right and this is wrong. You know what? I believe that's all God really requires us to do. You know what? He's given us the Word. The Word. You, you and I don't have to make up this. You know what's already given there? It's inspired of God. It has power within it. The only thing you and I need to do is to be trustworthy, uh, trusting and obedient in God that He will do the things through us. So you and I just got to stand up, hey, this is it. We got to make the decision ourselves to have a desire to hear the Word of God. Therefore, the Word of God proceeds out of us. You know, I heard Brother Ron while ago talking about him. And you know, these kids, they, they are sponges. The, everything they hear, Amen. you think they ain't listening, but they've got it. You know, and, I, and I've experienced that throughout life with my, with my children. You know what? But it, it's a, it, that really does not wear off as we get older. We think it does, but it does not. The thing is, though, is, is when we get older and we become to that age of accountability, once again, when we get there, we begin to shut out what we don't want to hear. We begin to make a decision. You know, when a man gets to that age of accountability, he, he's able to make decisions then. So we make the decision on what we hear. And if what we hear is good, it'll come out good. I believe that. That's right. But you know what? If you shut off what is good, good can't come out of it then. Because then left to ourselves, left to go on our own way, we're going to have something come out of us that's not God. That's all there is to it. Because the Word says this. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound up. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn their away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch unto all in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. You know what I'm going to tell you? Like I said, we're addressing the uh, ministers, teachers, and deacons. You know what? We're, we're now talking about the whole church, of what we're accountable of. You know what I'm going to tell you? As I begin to see right here, we know the Bible is true about everything. Everything is ever talked about, everything God ever promised us came to be. Whenever God inspired the Word of God to tell about times that would come, you read Matthew 24, it tells you about perilous times that would surely come. You keep on reading in Paul's teachings. He tells about perilous times that some were already there, but they would still come. Revelations, what does it tell about? It tells about a futuristic time that's going to come. But I'm going to tell you, as, I, as these times we know they're coming, the Word of God is still true today. And know that there's going to come a time where people will not endure sound doctrine. I believe we're seeing it right now. You look in the house of God, you see people not coming to church anymore. Uh, they don't have a desire to. They don't, they don't feel that there's a necessity to. That's right. You know what? But even though the Word of God speaks, you know, the Word of God's clear. It tells us that. that and no doubt, I believe we can all agree right now. The Word of God tells us that we need to be in the house of God. Amen. But you know, at this time, even though it says it, people still will not listen to it. It's there. It, homosexuality. One of, the, one of the biggest things going around right now. Everybody is accepting it. The Word of God says it's an abomination. says that it's against God. God does not accept homosexuality. And you know, what? Like, kind of like it is, they're, they're sodomites. But you know what? Even though it says it, they still will not endure. They will not listen. They will not take it in. But you know, the Word of God is what we're talking about. Handling the Word of God. If the Word of God is given to us and it's that good, then we've got to know what the Word of God has an intention to it. God is a God of intent. And you know, as I begin to think about this right here, uh, the Scripture tells us that there will be coming a time that there will uh, be that. But what I need you to realize right now, what we all need to begin to see about the Word of God, why we hold to the Word of God in everything we do, whether it's ministering and teaching or, or taking care of the church, all these things are wrapped up in this. The Word of God is meant to bear down on the lives of those that hear it. Amen. It's meant to be something to them. And if they're in the wrong, it's going to be, it's going to be hard to them. If they're in the right, it'll be a blessing to them. But it's meant to have a lasting effect on whoever hears it. You know what? 
You think about when you were lost. When you heard the Word of God, you were never the same anymore. You know what? I, I believe and that this is what I think you've got to have about you when you go out and tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You've got to believe that whoever hears it will never be the same. They'll, they'll never look at things the same anymore. You know, and I know there'll be some that won't believe. But yet, even though they don't believe, they're still accountable. That's right. They're still held to that standard, just like everybody else. A man can say there is no God, but one day after a while, when he stands before him, he's going to have to acknowledge it. That's not going to change. So what we see right here is, is that as it bears down on the wives, it says in the next part, it says, but after their own lust, they should heap uh, themselves teachers having itching ears. You know, I'm going to tell you, as I, as I was thinking about this right here, is whenever somebody begins to get down to this point to where people won't listen to them, if you're talking and somebody's not listening to you, how long are you going to keep talking? A lot of times I'm not, I'm not going to, if, you, if, you're, if I'm having a conversation with you and you're looking the other way and not even acknowledge me talking, I'm going to stop talking. I'll probably walk away. But when it comes to the Word of God, though, it's not, there's no time for that. There's no time for us because you know what? There's probably a majority that's not going to be listening. There's a majority that they'll, they'll think they're not listening. They'll act like they're not listening, but I, I believe the Word of God has it. But you know what? Whenever we see this right here, and I think there's why there's so many people, and uh, a lot of times, I'm going to tell you, I'll, I'll just get down to it. Uh, we've had a lot of men that have announced their calling to preach over the last few years that are not preaching anymore. They've turned and went away. The old devil's uh, stole them out, I believe. And you know what? Most of that comes because they think they're not good enough because they're not seeing results. They're not seeing things happen, which is what they think needs to happen. But like I said, that always the highest accountability will be set. If you hold yourself in check, whenever these times come, it's going to hold us. It's going to keep us going. It's going to make sure that we don't fall in these ways because whenever men begin to have those itching ears, itching ears come because they lose desire to hear the Word of God. Because if you don't hear the Word of God, you're going to replace it with something else. Every man's going to do that. There's a god shaped boy that every man has. It's got to be filled with Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And whenever that feeling comes, a desire is put in place to hear the Word of God. But when we do not hear the Word of God, we replace it with the things of the world. So you know, as I'm beginning to see this right here, uh, a lot of times what we begin to get to is that we hear watered down preaching is what we call it. Water down preaching comes whenever we begin to get the thought within our mind that the Word of God is a good idea or a good theory. That you can go by. Uh, and and we, we, we don't want to hurt everybody's feelings. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now. And I love each and every one of you. And, I, and don't think me uncompassionate, but your feelings are the last thing on my mind this morning. I mean, that, that's the way it's got to be. Uh, we got to leave self. If you want to leave self out, because myself, I want to care about what you think about me. You know what? Whenever you stand and give the Word of God, hey, that, those things are left aside. Now, don't, no doubt, I, 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 I do care what people uh, uh, see me as. I want them to see me as a man of God, but I know the Word of God can do that. It's not anything that I'm going to do that's going to keep The Word of God will keep me. The truth will be there. But you know what? Whenever you get to care about other people's feelings, you begin to tone things down and make sure that you think that it's a good idea for them to follow this. When you preach the Word of God, you cannot have that about you. You've got to have it in such a way that you've almost got to demand that it be done this way. Because God does demand it to be that way. And if God's speaking through you, would He want it to come out in such a way that uh, uh, you might just think it's a good idea for you to live this way? You know what? It'd be easy for us right now. Hey, we're, we're on Facebook right now. And how, how easy it would be to stay at home and watch Facebook all the time. But the Bible tells us we're able-bodied Christians. We're supposed to be in the house of God. In person, now, that's not going to be replaced. Uh, you know what? But hey, how easy would it be for us to tell today that, it, that it's all right. If you want to stay home, you want to be comfortable there, that's okay. That's not what the Word of God says. Where God is supposed to say, I have a good avenue. We're using it right now. And I believe the Word of God will go out in a way that it sees fit. But it will never replace the house of God because the Word of God tells where that's supposed to be. Put things in priority. It's not a, not a good idea. Uh, you know what? Ideas and theories, uh, you know what? We put ourselves in those. The Word of God can't replace that. You and I, anything we say cannot take the place of how true the Word of God is. And then as we get down right here, the engineers, I want to tell you about them teachers right there that uh, begin to teach about them engineers. You know what? I have, I've said this many times, and I believe that a lot of people have, uh, have, have said this, but the most popular teachers, most times, are not the most faithful teachers. You know what? Whenever we begin to think about this, about preachers and teachers, uh, you know what? I, I, I know that there are ones that are on TV and on Facebook today that have millions and millions of people 
And a lot of people will say, well, they, they must be living for the Lord right. They must be doing things right because how many people are following after them? You know what? God has never been a God of quantity. He's been a God of quality. And you know, knowing that today, you know what? The, the, some of the most faithful and, the, and, the, and to the Word of God, and that's what we're talking about, the Word of God, the most faithful have very few people that will listen to them. They're not the most preferred to listen to because they tell it straightforward. They tell it how it is. That's what he was telling Timothy right here, not to look for number, not, not to look that you're going to be the most popular person in the land. You look at the 12 disciples, what was their end? About all of them, you look it up by history, they met their end and devised in some way that was not fit by you and I. You know, we, we, we didn't want to be killed. We don't want to be killed for preaching the Word of God, but you know what, one day it may happen to be. And for them it was. You know, they wasn't the most popular land. Jesus went to His own people. And you know, they, they accepted Him not. You know what, so I'm going to tell you today, when you teach the truth of the Word of God, the, the, the crowds are most time not going to follow you. And I, you know what I'm going to tell you about a preaching deacon? You know what, Stephen, you think about him? Well, he, well, he got up there and he told him straight forward. He told him how it was. And you know what, this crowd, they, they were cursing him and everything. And, uh, and you know what, he, he did something that pricked their hearts. Told them the truth. And what they do to him, they killed him. They stoned him. That's right. But you know what I'm going to tell you, even though he was unpopular, one man did good enough to hold with all them men. Everybody that heard it, that one man called Stephen told them enough truth that now they were accountable for their actions. You know what I think Jesus said whenever he walked this walked this life? And you know, he taught those many things. It was all to bring them in and hold them accountable for what the things that they would do. You know what? You and I today, you know what? I, I, I didn't put Jesus up on that cross. I didn't drive those nails. Uh, but you know what? I'm just as guilty as they were. Because of the sin I got in my life, because of the teachings that were there, and I am now accountable for all things. So you know what? Whenever uh, Stephen preached that gospel right there, when you preach the gospel today, uh, you're not going to be the most popular, but you will do exactly what God wants to be done. So you know what I'm going to tell you? These ones that are taken by grows and stuff, uh, they don't have it. I, I wrote this I wrote this thing down about the uh, engineers that a man wrote in that last name Clark. Uh, you know, I'm going to share it with you. It says, endless curiosity and insatiable desire of, of variety. And they get their, their eyes, their ears tickled with the language and accent of a person. Abandoning the good and faithful preacher for the fine speaker. You know, that don't sum up how things are right now. You know, we're moving to more modern things, more well-spoken things, more politically correct things, you know, that are more acceptable in the world that we're living in right now. But is that good handling of the Word of God? You know what? The Word of God tells me that I serve a God that changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know what? So when it comes to the Word, His Word is the same way. Because that's Jesus Christ that's been talking about right there. So you know what? When a man today would begin to believe everything that he's been taught of the Word of God and go after those fine speakers just because they're better. You know what? we got churches today that won't let men preach unless they've got a doctor's degree. They won't let him preach unless he lines up with their standards. Well, shouldn't we begin to call men to preach that, are, uh, that, that have been called of God, been placed there, that line up, their life fits what they're preaching? You know what? Because the same thing is going to be accountable to you whenever you face... Uh, the judgment seat one day after a while is if all yourself lined up with the Word of God before you went and preached it. You know what I was thinking today? Uh, you know, as I was studying over this once again, uh, you know what, taking the Lord's Supper. You know what, what did it, what did it tell in the Lord's Supper? It said, that as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And But it goes on down to say that a man ought not take it unworthily. You know what, I'm going to tell you, uh, and I've heard, I know you've heard Granddad say it a million times eat more meat to drink more blood. You know what? Whenever I believe that you're taking in the Word of God, I believe that you're getting into it. You're taking in that meat. You're, you're taking in Jesus Himself. And whenever you take that, don't spread it forth unworthily. You know what? You take it and you apply it to your life, that makes you worthy. You know what? Whenever you take it and you uh, live it in such a way that you believe it and you begin to speak of it as you believe it, you handle the Word of God the way that you would believe it, those things right there make you worthy to bring forth the Word of God. And that's what it takes to be all these things. So you know what? I... I'm going to tell you, I'm going to leave you with this one quote that I, I think we all know. Uh, you know what, that's what I think verse 5 was getting at, but it's something in modern day for us, is if you don't stand for anything, you, you, I mean, if you don't stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. You know what, something's been said many times over, but you know what I'm going to tell you right now, a doctor, something everybody wants to get away with, nobody wants to talk about doctor, I have no problem preaching doctor. You know what, if your doctor lines up with the Word of God, with Jesus Christ, I, I don't think you have no problem with it. That's right. My doctor lines up with the Word of God. 
And you know what I believe? But you know why I believe that that way? It's not because I'm a general Baptist. Not because I come to this church. Because I study it out and make sure that my life, everything that I follow by, is in the Word of God. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I always keep it. But the one that I believe in, you know what he, he said from the very beginning. So if a man is afraid to stand for something, he'll fall for anything. That's the way, that's for all. It's not just the ministers, teachers, and deacons, but each and every one of us. When we go out in the world, if we're, if we're scared and ashamed of the Word of God, you'll be soon carried away by every little doctrine that comes and flows in this walk of life. So, you know what? That's why we need to hold ourselves accountable to the Word of God when we handle the Word of God in such a way that God has sent us out to do. So, we're going to come with a song of invitation. That's all we want to on our heart this morning. But I hope and pray that we found something in it uh, that we can hold ourselves accountable in this way. Uh, If I were wandering in the path of sin, I would wander no more. I'd turn my steps about, take another route in the house of the Lord. Dear friend, right now, reject the Savior no more. Just turn your steps about, take another route. Take another route to the house of the Lord.